Hi, my name's Hani. I'm a doctor and skincare YouTuber. I make videos on skincare for people of colour. You're not about to get on this flight, sis. I was interrogated for just under two hours. Today is maybe slightly controversial, like a more controversial topic. I want to talk about hydroquinone, which is the main ingredient in skin bleach. And I want to talk about why my opinion on using hydroquinone has changed. So I would obviously never endorse using bleach or hydroquinone to change your skin colour or lighten your skin. I am totally against that. But actually, I think what, my, what I've realised from speaking to people and reading the comments on my videos and just kind of looking at the general discourse around bleaching your skin is that people are going to use hydroquinone and skin bleaches anyway and I think the most important thing is to provide access to good information about what the risks are, what the side effects are and how to use it safely because I think people are going to, if people want to use hydroquinone or bleaching products they're going to do that anyway. I kind of felt I have a responsibility to at least share the information around what it is, how to use it safely, what things to look out for, and then let people make their own decision about what they want to do. So this video is about using hydroquinone, but it's specifically about using it for things like dark spots. So I'm going to get into that. But the first thing I want to say is I'm not actually passing any judgment on people who bleach their skin. While it's something I don't agree with ideologically, I do recognize that like we don't live in a vacuum. Colorism is a very real social force in a lot of communities, especially like black and Asian communities. Dark skin is less desirable. It provides less lucrative work opportunities, can limit people's marriage prospects and things like that. So I don't want to pretend that people don't bleach their skin as a form of assimilation. Like it's something people do because of undue untoward pressures from society and you know their communities at large but if you do have dark skin i want to say dark skin is beautiful it's enough and you don't need to change it although as i say i'm not naive to the reasons why people might bleach their skin so with that said i want to just talk about hydroquinone but again on the kind of proviso that i'm talking about the very specific use of hydroquinone to use as um, an agent to help kind of accelerate the getting rid of dark spots that you might have from inflammation or acne and that sort of thing. So when I talk about skin bleach, I'm kind of using skin bleach and hydroquinone interchangeably because hydroquinone is often the main agent that people use um, when lightening dark spots. So I think the other really important thing, the other really important reason why I wanted to do this video is because you can actually access quite safe versions of hydroquinone to use via a dermatologist. And I think by providing that information, people are able to access compounded hydroquinone that's safe to use rather than formulations that you might find in like a shop illegally where it would contain high levels of things like much higher levels than are appropriate of things like steroids and mercury which should not ever be present in any skincare ingredient whatsoever cool so four percent hydroquinone which is actually now regulated in both the us and the uk so it's not something you can buy over the counter in the uk it's always been the case but in america i know that you could previously buy percentages lower than hydroquinone like over the counter and that sort of thing but it's now kind of being regulated quite strictly worldwide so four percent hydroquinone is actually the gold standard for treating hyperpigmentation that is to say it's like the best thing available for it and it's what they compare other things against they have shown as i've discussed in my hyperpigmentation video that things like 10 to 20 percent of azelaic acid is shown to be equivalent to four percent hydroquinone in clinical trials but kind of the reality is that hydroquinone is the kind of most well studied and the most kind of effective at quickly getting rid of hyperpigmentation. I also want to talk about the risks and side effects because hydroquinone is actually quite a... I personally wouldn't... I don't think I would use it um, to treat dark spots just because, as I say, other things have been shown to be as effective, such as 10 to 20% azelaic acid. But the reality is, that, as I say, people are going to keep using it anyway, so I want to give you kind of the, all the information that you would need. So there's a lot of side effects associated with hydroquinone use and I'm actually going to do a separate video after this one talking about how you can reduce the risk of each side effect and the other reason I think this is really important is because I've actually seen some of the online dermatologists I'm not going to say who but I've seen some of the online dermatologists that give you kind of compounded prescriptions that contain hydroquinone have actually given inappropriate usage guidelines I have sent them an email and hopefully that's something they'll change but I want this video to hopefully be like a, a really robust explanation of how you should use it if you are going to use it. So I now want to talk about some of the main formulations 
that if you access hydroquinone legally from a dermatologist that you might find. So the first one is hydroquinone 4% plus tretinoin. Tretinoin is a vitamin A derivative and it helps with kind of skin turnover and often you find that combined with hydroquinone. The other formulation that's really popular is Kligman's formula. Kligman's formula is a formula of hydroquinone, a formulation of hydroquinone that contains hydroquinone normally at 4%, tretinoin at various percentages and a steroid at various percentages. Kligman's formula is not consistent, there's lots of different versions of Kligman's formula, but in, in essence they'll almost always contain a steroid, tretinoin and hydroquinone, and the percentages of each can vary slightly. But I just want to talk to you about which formulation, which version I think is better, version 1 where it's hydroquinone and tretinoin, or version 2 where it's hydroquinone, tretinoin and a steroid. And I'm just going to explain to you what each thing does. So hydroquinone is obviously the thing that causes skin lightening, it's a tyrosinase inhibitor, meaning it inhibits the enzyme tyrosinase, which is one of the enzymes needed to create melanin. So by inhibiting that enzyme, by blocking that enzyme, you actually disrupt the process of your body making melanin, which is why it causes skin bleaching or skin lightening. So that's what the hydroquinone does. The tretinoin, which it's been combined with in both of the versions that I explained, tretinoin, what that does is it increases skin turnover. So it's a vitamin A derivative. It helps your skin. It kind of makes the process of your skin shedding and producing new skin a bit faster and so obviously the hydroquinone effect can be seen more quickly because it's accelerating your skin turnover but as well as that it also helps the um, hydroquinone penetrate more deeply and then thirdly tretinoin is thought to actually by a separate mechanism to the hydroquinone help with hyperpigmentation and it does that by dispersing melanocytes melanocytes are the cells that contain melanin so it just kind of disperses them so it's, they're kind of evenly distributed and you don't get like patches of hyperpigmentation saying that tretinoin it doesn't that's not the main thing it does it doesn't do that that much so obviously i've mentioned that because it does do that but the main way it helps the hydroquinone is actually by helping it penetrate more deeply and by increasing the turnover so you can see the effects of the hydroquinone more quickly now onto what the steroid does which obviously the steroid was in version two Kligman's formula it's not in version one what the steroid does is both the hydroquinone and the tretinoin are both really irritating. If you've ever used tretinoin, you, I use it all the time. It's, it's really quite irritant. Your skin starts peeling and shedding. Your skin feels a bit raw. And then hydroquinone as well is quite an irritating ingredient. And often the combination is quite hard for people to tolerate. So the steroid works by helping your skin be able to put up with that. So steroid suppress, kind of suppresses the inflammatory response. So it reduces all of the inflammation and it makes your skin able to tolerate using kind of two irritant products together. And so the steroid essentially is just to help you be able to use this product. And the steroid can vary in different versions of Kligman's formula, the percentages and the type of steroid vary a lot. But actually, and the reason I'm gonna to say to you, I prefer version one. If you're gonna use compounded hydroquinone, I would prefer version one if I were you, where it's just hydroquinone plus tretinoin to version two is because a lot of the side effects associated with hydroquinone use are often actually from the steroid. And I'm gonna just, I think I'll include some pictures just to show you what some of the different side effects are. So just, yeah, as I said, gonna include some pictures. So acne from the steroid can happen. You can get steroid-induced telangiectasias, which is where you get essentially like small blood vessels that are visible on the surface of the skin because steroids Unfortunately, they do thin your skin, whether you're taking them orally or putting them on your face. You can also get hypertrichosis, where the steroid stimulates hair growth on your face. Um, and in a study they did where they looked at people who were using Kligman's formula, actually, they found that a lot of the side effects were from the steroid use. So I think if you can avoid version 2 Kligman's formula and use version 1, where it's just hydroquinone and tretinoin, I would go for that. But as I say, my next video is going to be on how you can use hydroquinone safely. So one other thing actually that the steroids can do, because steroids reduce the immune system's functioning, they can predispose you to things like fungal acne. So some patients in some of the studies that were recruited found that they had developed fungal acne, which they didn't before. So as I say, version one, hydroquinone plus tretinoin, is definitely preferable to version two in my opinion, which is the Kligman's formula, hydroquinone plus a steroid plus tretinoin. So I wanna talk about some of the other side effects of hydroquinone use. One of them is ochronosis. I've spoken about this a lot before. It's like a blue-black mottled discoloration you get on your skin from prolonged hydroquinone use. 
in the in the studies I looked at, it says that it's not really been observed in many people, but unfortunately, I just don't think that's true. I've seen it firsthand. I know a lot of people would have seen it firsthand, especially if you look at people from communities where people are kind of using skin bleaching products. The reality is that a lot of the people who use hydroquinone aren't exactly the same people who are going to be recruited into a trial and have their side effects measured. So just anecdotally, it's something I've definitely seen, and I know a lot of you guys will have as well. Um, but the kind of official evidence says that it's not something that's been observed in many people, but I think anecdotally we can see that that's probably not the case. Ochronos is a blue-black discoloration of the skin and it happens when, because you're blocking this enzyme tyrosinase, some of the things that the tyrosinase would be breaking down begin to build up in the skin. And so you can see those because they, they contain a blue-black pigment that causes this discoloration. And so one thing that I'm going to talk about in my next video is actually when you use hydroquinone, if you want to use it safely and in a way that doesn't give you side effects, you should be taking breaks. And I'm going to talk more about the kind of regimens and how you should take those breaks. But actually, it's to give your skin an opportunity to be able to break down some of the leftover product within your skin that isn't able to, because you're obviously stopping a bit of a chemical reaction that's meant to be happening in your skin. And so this, by using it in cycles where you have breaks, you can actually give your skin the opportunity to kind of break down some of the things that are accumulating. Um, to prevent this discoloration happening. So the next side effect I want to talk about is the carcinogenic, meaning cancer causing activity of hydroquinone, but also kind of the toxic, the toxicity of hydroquinone formulations in general. I'll quickly just say a note on the toxicity of hydroquinone formulations. So a lot of the time when you buy formulations that aren't from a dermatologist, I keep stressing this because I cannot say how important this is, a lot of the formulations that you buy will contain mercury and mercury is highly toxic it shouldn't exist in any skincare and actually when they've done studies they found that some of the products that people buy illegally contain really really high levels of mercury mercury is highly toxic to the body but critically it accumulates in the body your body doesn't really get rid of it and so it accumulates in the brain it's a neurotoxin and it, it can accumulate in the liver and kidneys as well causing liver and kidney damage so i keep saying this but it's because this point is really important it's really important to get your hydroquinone from a dermatologist, you know that none of this weird stuff is in there. And then a little note on the carcinogenic activity of hydroquinone. There's been no link between hydroquinone use and cancer in humans, but when they did studies where they fed hydroquinone, which obviously isn't the same, you're not eating the hydroquinone, but when they did studies where they fed hydroquinone to rats, they did find that some of the rats went on to develop blood cancers, liver cancers, and kidney cancers. As I say, this hasn't been reproduced in humans, thankfully, but it is something to be very, very mindful of. And I'm going to give some advice on how you can try and reduce these risks in my next video, how to try and apply it more safely and more cautiously. And then the next side effect, which is not as kind of scary as some of the other ones, but definitely something to think about, especially because it's one of the commoner side effects, is what you can get, which is called the halo effect, which is where you can get a patch of, you can get a patch of surrounding skin become lighter where you were trying to treat. And what I mean by that is if you've got like a dark spot that you're trying to treat and the skin around it is normal, when you apply your hydroquinone to that patch, it's very easy to accidentally kind of apply hydroquinone to the normal surrounding, the normal coloured surrounding skin. And so if that goes on, what you end up with is the dark spot has now probably, you know, come to match the rest of your skin. But actually the normal coloured skin around it is now lighter. And so you've got a halo effect where you've got like a halo around a normal coloured patch of skin. And that's just because of how skincare works. When you apply skincare, it obviously just spreads a little bit. It migrates. It's a cream. It travels. Um, and so it's quite easy to accidentally do that. Fortunately, when you stop using the hydroquinone, the skin recolorizes, which is good. But I am going to, as I say, in my next video, talk about how you can try and avoid that side effect. And then lastly, the last side effect I want to talk about is rebound hyperpigmentation. So I've alluded to the fact that you need to use hydroquinone in cycles. You can't use it run on. I'm going to explain more about the regimen and stuff in the next video. But if you do use hydroquinone on and on and on for a very long period without taking any breaks, you can actually just, and this is almost always happens, where the pigmentation that you're trying to treat comes back. And when it comes back as rebound pigmentation, it's highly resistant to hydroquinone or other agents, and it's very, very difficult to treat. And if you're at that stage, I would highly recommend seeing a dermatologist and seeing what alternative treatment plans are available to you. Because rebound pigmentation is really, really hard to treat. And obviously there's an easy way around this. Don't use your hydroquin and run on, use it in cycles. If you're going to use it, as I say, I'll explain more in my next video. But yeah, essentially that's the safest way to use it if you're going to use it. And one other thing I wanna say, I think people often like have the misapprehension that 
more is better. So I just want to say 4% is the gold standard of hydroquinone. You're not going to achieve better results by using 8%. You're not going to achieve better results by using 6%. 4% is the gold standard. So don't think that, oh, it has more hydroquinone and it's better. Actually, no, it's not better. You run the risk of developing the side effects more quickly. It's going to be much more irritating. And so one really kind of important thing I want to stress throughout all of this is if you're using hydroquinone, make sure it's not above 4%. Okay, also, obviously, lots of doom and gloom about hydroquinone and how dangerous it is. Just a skincare update, I am currently, obviously, as many of you may know, I'm producing a skincare brand called Hue by Dr. Honey. We're making skincare for people of color. Our skincare is, we're formulating it with the utmost rigor and kind of concern for everyone's health and making sure the product is as safe and effective as possible. We're currently in formulation. I'm really, really excited. I can't say too much. I know a lot of you have been really, really patient and have been wondering where it is, but I promise it's in the works. It's going really well. And obviously we're making products with skin of color in mind. So the products that we're producing are gonna be safe. They're gonna be effective. And thank you so much for your ongoing support and kindness because so many of you have messaged me like really, really sweet things. And you guys have been really, really supportive overall. And I've honestly been really, really grateful. So just stay tuned for that. I'm also gonna put a link to our mailing list if you want to be the first to know when we launch our product. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting me as I say, but also I think it's so, so important to ensure that people have all of the information and that they're able to make decisions while being fully informed. If you're planning to use hydroquinone, try and use it safely. I want you to have all of the resources if it's something you're going to do anyway, so that you can actually mitigate as many of the risks as much as possible. As I say, my next video is going to be specifically on how to use hydroquinone safely. So if it is something that you're thinking of doing or are doing already, definitely watch that so you know that you're being, you know, that you're using it with the utmost care and cautiousness. But once again, thank you so much. Like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what other videos you want to see. Let me know if you've had any experiences with hydroquinone that have gone well or haven't gone well and what you've done. Like I'd be like, I'm honestly all is. I'd love to know how you guys have gotten on with it. But yeah, thank you so much and take care, guys.